You know the one good thing, if you can call it a good thing, that 2020 has done for most people that love photography, do photography, is they've kind of stayed with what they got. Yeah? They haven't been uh, selling gear and switching sides and, you know, having uh, uh, gear anxiety about the latest, greatest uh, Sony A7 Mark IV, uh, Mark IV S squared. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gotta laugh every time Sony comes out with a new camera that fixes the issues with the one that came out just six to eight months prior to it. It's also one of the reasons why I don't like Sony cameras. They're poorly made. Sony's not a camera company. They're a consumer electronics company. And they kind of make half-arsed attempts at cameras and they, they're going to fix that. You got a problem? Don't worry about it. We'll fix that in the next model. It's coming out eight months from now. I don't like that sort of uh, corporate ethos. That sort of corporate ethos is, uh, not only is it planned obsolescence, but it's, uh, I find it, uh, and you could disagree with me, I find it quite uh, disgusting. I saw a comment on a YouTube uh, photography channel, and I think it's very well put, and it's kind of what uh, most people that are intelligent to feel. And I'm going to give a quote now of what this person said. The camera industry is starting to solve problems that nobody has. Um, I could see the usefulness of animal eye autofocus, and uh, only up to a point, obviously. You don't need that. Uh, at some point, skills account for something. That's not to say that I actually praise a camera that has inferior capabilities to another. I've said countless times that Sony's eye autofocus said it many times, even though I absolutely cannot stand Sony cameras for several valid, empirical, demonstrable reasons, that their eye autofocus is better than anybody else's. Yeah, better than anybody else's. And there's a car, I can't think of it, it was made in the 70s, I'm sorry if it escapes my mind right now, had better fuel efficiency than any other car. Man, that sucker could really go a long way on a gallon of gas. The only problem was that it was no damn good. <laughs> it kept falling apart. Boy, it got really good fuel efficiency, however. Maybe somebody could jog my name, uh, my memory as far as, uh, I don't know a whole lot about cars, but I, I remember that one. Um, Future-proof photography. Now, photography, just like any other sort of equipment, just like this iMac here. I have a 27-inch iMac that I do photo editing on in my other room. This is only a 21-inch, and it's slow, relatively speaking, even though it has a beautiful 4K display. All technology is obsolete. One thing that's remained consistent from digital photography back through film photography, and this is undeniable, and don't care if you disagree with me because I'm right, that medium format is future-proof. Up to a point, obviously so, but it is future-proof. Now, when I was in photography school in the early 1990s, 1990, 1991, that's quite a long time ago. It was 30 years ago. People are still using the same double pair of cameras that I had. I had a pair of uh, six, seven Pentaxes and eight lenses and a nice aluminum zero Halliburton case. People are still using that damn camera because it's so awesome, so simple. It's also, too, very heavy and very noisy. Um... I don't know whether Fujifilm likes it or not, but it's an undeniable fact that I'm their biggest salesperson on the GFX line of cameras. I've owned them all. I still own two of them, and I own all their lenses except for the 120 and the 63 millimeter, which I sold off, which I was not particularly fond of. I absolutely love the GFX series of cameras. I've been waiting for well over a decade for an affordable, well-made medium format camera and medium format anybody that uses it will be spoiled you'll see the huge tiff files gfx 50s or 50r tiff files like 650 megabytes on average absolutely frigging enormous they're undeniably gorgeous and beautiful there's so much work uh, so much there to work with in photoshop or what i use now capture one in photoshop Medium format always has been future-proof, up to a point. What does future-proof, someone will say, what does future-proof mean? It means it'll last a lot longer and be infinitely more useful. Kind of like that old pair of shoes that you got. They, you know, they're kind of rough around the edges, and they're, in, they're not as high-tech as the latest shoes that have pump, air pumps on them and all that other garbage. You still love them because they work great, and they're reliable, and they're... You know, they do exactly what, just like, you can't see it now, but I got a 127-year-old sewing machine right over here. It was made at the start of the Klondike Gold Rush, and it was also made when they started constructing the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It's 123 year, years old, 
made in 1897. It's right over here. It like weighs a ton. Nearly killed me getting it. That sucker, I've been sewing leather on it. Just useful. That's, that's a future-proof device. I heard this singer at one point in time was buying these machines back so they could destroy them. And the reason why they destroyed them is because they lasted too long. That's obviously not going to happen with any sort of digital technology. But when everybody's watching their budget, and I'm, I'm a tight guy, you know, I, I am. I'm, I'm not I'm a tight wide. I don't have that much money. I got like uh, $3,600 to my name right now, $3,600 plus or minus a few hundred dollars due to bills and whatnot. I am a tight wad. But as long as I take care of it and I have uh, insurance for drops, loss, and thefts, which I do, it's called Inland Marine Insurance Policy, also too called a personal articles policy, that, you know, look, I got a 5K 27-inch iMac in my back room there that I edit photos on. When I bring up a full TIFF file from any GFX camera, whether it's a GFX 100 or the GFX... Uh, uh, 50R that I have, which is my favorite digital camera of all time, which, by the way, is on sale right now. What the heck is going to happen in the future that, you know, that, oh, that the camera's no good anymore? Sports isn't getting more fast. I referred you back to the quote that I saw on a photography tube. The camera industry is starting to solve problems that nobody has. That's accurate in more ways than one. Um, this video, by the way, was not meant to be any sort of rant against Sony. I mean, nobody is in any denial that I have no love um, for uh, the Sony corporate ethos. I know they make a lot of sensors. However, Panasonic is going to start completely dominating Sony. And they have a lot more money than Sony. And I also have a lot more sensor fab factories than Sony does, even though Sony's been dumping countless hundreds of millions in the sensor fab. But Panasonic is soon, whether that be two or three years or even four years, will overtake Sony, and that's a really good thing. I've always really loved Panasonic. I love the hell out of Panasonic. Don't like their digital cameras. Their digital video stuff is incredible, obviously so. Um, maybe the only good thing, maybe not the only good thing, but really the only good thing I could think of superficially to come out of 2020 for f uh, photography is that people are holding on to what they got. It's like, you know, this is good enough. What do I need more? People get shocked when they send me an email. It's like, well, I got so-and-so camera. You know, it's a few years old. Should I sell it and buy this new whatever? And they get shocked when I tell them, like, no, I mean, telling me what you want to do with it, what you have is perfectly fine. If you sell it off and buy this XYZ camera, depending on what they're asking, they say it's only 5 to 10% better. I mean, you're going to take a huge hit, you're going to lose money, and you got something that's only 5% better, and you have a new system to learn. They get shocked that I don't tell them, yeah, sell that stuff and buy something new. I don't do that. I never tell people to sell their stuff, by the way. Um... Getting mesmerized by the digital fireplace here. Um, I'm going to warm my hands by it later after this video is over with. Yeah, 2020 really sucks. We're all waiting for 2020 to be over with. I know there's going to be a new GFX camera mentioned in the early part of uh, 2021. Also, to the announcement of the X-H2. When that's going to be announced next year, I have no idea. I don't work for that company. I love their products. I love what they do. They haven't done everything perfectly. There are 50 millimeter f1 lens I don't like. I said as much in the video. Don't like that lens at all. Um, nobody makes all awesome lenses. No company has ever done that. Not even Leica, Nikon, anybody. So the fact that the Fujifilm makes a, a couple bummer lenses, like the 18 millimeter f2 and whatever else second lens you think is the the biggest bummer from Fujifilm. They're still they're doing almost everything right. I still wish they would fix their lens hoods. Not this particular lens hood, which is all aluminum uh, milled, which doesn't come with a lens, but those plastic lens hood, they need to start doing what Canon and Nikon does and using nylon fill in their lens hood, which makes them really, really tough. It's the same thing as steel reinforcement and concrete does. Um, concrete itself is brittle but stiff. When you add rebar, it makes it uh, flexible and uh, powerful. That's what nylon fill or glass fill does in uh, lens hoods, so. I don't know, I'm gonna ask you a question too. Is it just me? Because everybody else says the same thing and I feel it the same way too because of what's been going on in 2020. Don't you feel like the whole year is like zipped by? Like, oh, what was that? 2020 just like zipped by. I get that strange feeling too. Isn't it weird? Anyway. 
wait for it to be oh, Fujifilm. I can't wait for the new GFX camera. I hope there's a monochrome camera somewhere out there. Oh, it's a neighbor's very loud car with no muffler on. Very noisy. Very obnoxious. Kind of like me, I guess. Goodbye.